Hey folks, and welcome back to another video on this YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well. And first of all, I just want to say that I am not the original creator of any of the concepts or terms teached in this video. All my success goes to the original creator, ICT. Just wanted to get that out there in case anyone thought I was trying to copy ICT or make it seem like I created his topics or concepts. So I decided that I wanted to publish videos because there's a lot of new traders who want to learn ICT, but you know, maybe they have kids, they work a job and therefore they don't have the time to study his insanely long mentorships, which I completely understand. And therefore I am here to give you the information that I believe you need in the shortest and simplest way. So thank you. And let's get into it. So in today's video, we will be going over the ICT 2022 mentorship model. Uh, that is, well, that is the one if, yeah, I think that that is the most popular ICT model, which I understand, you know, it works and it's fairly easy to understand. So all this model really is, is that it is a significant liquidity sweep followed by displacement, a market structure shift and some sort of inefficiency. Whether that be a, you know, a, a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, or a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, um, depends on the liquidity sweep and the bias. So, firstly, let's go over what liquidity ICT uses as his valid liquidity for this model. Because I see a lot of people that are confused as to what highs and lows they need to focus on. So, ICT has a few quote unquote valid liquidity points or valid highs and lows when it comes to this model. So we have daily highs and lows, weekly highs and lows, lunch hour high and low. And um, the lunch hour high and low is between 12 at noon to uh, 1 p.m. Uh, New York local time. And we have session highs and lows, that's Asian and London. And then I would say that uh, higher time frame equal highs and lows are always a valid point of liquidity, especially if it's in line with your bias, right? Um, relative equal highs and lows are just two or more highs and lows that are right next to each other, indicating that more liquidity has been built within those specific highs and lows. So after we established our points of liquidity and established a daily bias, we would wait for price to run the stops above one of the highs if we're bearish or one of the stops below one of the lows if we're bullish. And in my opinion, what has worked for me, if you're bearish for the day, don't even look for bullish for value gaps or PDRAs um, that form during that day. That'll, you know, confuse you and make you want to take trades that you shouldn't. I believe you should generally always follow your bias. So when we get that stop we're looking for, we wait for a displacement to occur, occur in the opposite direction of the sweep. Meaning that if we are bullish and we sweep a low, we wait for bullish displacement uh, to form after the low has been swept. Then wait for a uh, displacement that causes a market structure shift and leaves behind a fair value gap. And then you take the first fair value gap that forms, okay? And if you're wondering, displacement is just an aggressive move in either direction. So let's go, um, let's go over some examples. So as you can see right here, we have the Asian range. That is the, I marked out the Asian high and I marked out the Asian low. So as you can see, we get our Asian high sweep right here. And this is on a five minute chart. This was on a 15 minute chart. Now we're on a five minute chart and I would look for my displacement to the downside because we swept the high. Remember when we sweep a high, we want bearish displacement, right? And that was an aggressive move to the downside that left behind a market structure shift and a fair value gap. Can you find that anywhere on this chart? It's okay if you can't. Okay. So as you can see right here, we have our displacement leg and we have our market structure shift and we have our fair value gap. And as you can see, now this is cherry picked. Um, don't expect all your trades to go like this, of course, but this is genuinely what you look for. Tap into the fair value gap and then we drop down lower, right? 
but then we have a lot of people who are confused when there's multiple Faraday gaps. As you can see, we have one here, right? And we have another one here. And now let me show you what you could do in a situation like this. As you can see, we hit the Asian low. Sorry for jumping to another topic, but generally when you trade um, ranges uh, session, you want to target as you know, you want to use your target. Um, you want to use the opposite low or high um, of the session that you're trading as your target. So if we swept Asian high, my target would be Asian low. We swept London high, my target would be London low. Okay. So there you see, we have two Fibonacci gaps, right? So how do you know which one to take? And that's a bit tricky. So what you could do is to get a better uh, risk to reward is you could find the the fifty percent level of the first Fibonacci gap. Um, what you would do is you would take your fifty percent uh, or your uh, premium discount ICT Fibonacci, and you would draw it from the bottom of the Fibonacci gap to the top, and that fifty percent mark is what you would use as your target if you are not you know satisfied with the risk to reward that it provides down here maybe the fairway gap is too big you could use that 50 percent level of the fairway gap as your entry the 50 percent mark on inefficiencies are usually a point of reversal or just another uh spot where price could likely reverse off of so you could go back in time and test this on i would say like most of the time, actually, on Fibonacci gaps, we hit the 50% before going down. So a lot of the time, you could get a better entry off your Fibonacci gap. Sometimes you'll miss it because it won't go to the 50%, but a lot of times it will. So if you are not satisfied with the risk to reward it gives you at the bottom of the Fibonacci gap, you could use the middle part of the Fibonacci gap as your entry instead. And what you could also do is, this is what ICT recommends in the 2022 model. Um, because a lot of people had asked him the same question. So what he said was that he sometimes waits for the, the one of the candles to go up and retest or test one of the, the, the Fibonacci gap that's above or below. As you can see here, goes up, retest this, come down and closes inside that same Fibonacci gap. And then he would place his entry right here when it closed inside this Fibonacci gap. So that is two ways you could trade when there's multiple fairway gaps and of course you may miss it but it's worth it in the long run okay so just to quickly go over what you should target in this model is internal liquidity when trading out of range like when you're not trading session highs and lows you should target internal liquidity and as i said before when you're trading session highs and lows you should just trade the opposite of what was swept so if the high of a session was swept you target the low, vice versa, right? But if you trade daily, let's say you swept a daily high and you expect it to go lower, you would target internal liquidity. And internal liquidity is marked out here. This is internal because it's inside the range. So this is internal, this is internal, this is external. I drew this out to kind of, you know, make it easier for you to understand. Um, so I hope you understand. This is internal, this is internal, this is external. Because this is inside of this range, this is not, right? Had there been another low below this, this would have been internal, and that low below this one would have been external. So you always target internal liquidity, but then a lot of people ask, but what internal liquidity do I target, right? And I understand. So what you could do, and what ICT recommends again in the 2022 mentorship, is that you target uh, equilibrium for vague gaps or in equilibrium PD race, right? So let's say we swept something up here and you got your entry here, but you were confused as to whether you would take your profit at this internal liquidity level or this. So then you would use your, your uh, premium discount Fibonacci to figure out what, which one of these are near equilibrium. Equilibrium is the 50% mark of the uh, premium discount Fibonacci, right? So as you can see, the 50% lines up decently with these two equal lows. So that is what you would use as your target in this case. Uh, what some people like to do is that instead of taking their full their full profit here, 
they would use that first internal liquidity to move their stop to break even and maybe take partials and then either take their full profit at the next internal liquidity or at the external sell side liquidity down here. So that's just, that comes down to confidence and screen time. Um, so, but I hope you understand where your targets are. And generally you always want to put your stop above the nearest high, right? So had you entered here, your stop will be up here, right? Um, but if you can't, let me go back here. If you can't, if you feel like the high is too far away, what I would do is I would, let's see you entered off of this for Vega, the first one. And obviously this is way too high of a stop loss all the way up to this high, right? I would place my stop loss at this fair value gap at the 50% mark of the fair value gap above it. That's a valid place to place your stop too. So if there's two, if you can't figure out a proper stop loss, either don't take the trade or use the uh, PDRA that's above it as your stop. So you include that in your stop loss. But for me, in this case, the top of this fair value gap would be too far for me. So I use the 50% of this fair value gap as my stop. If I did not want to put it above this high or above the high of that fair gap. So I hope that was clear. Um, so that is the uh, premium discount Fibonacci that I was talking about. In case you don't have it, there it is. Um, so let's go over the checklist. So firstly, you would want to stop run above a daily high, below a daily low, um, above a session high or below a session low, the lunch hour high and the lunch hour low. Lunch hour is just the time period that's between 12 at noon and 1 p.m. Okay, the, in that one hour, you never place a trade. Okay, I'll tell you this right now if nobody told you. Do not place trades in that one hour, okay? You can, if you, if you place a trade beforehand, you don't have to close it. You can let it run over the hour, but don't place any trades in that hour. That is usually a consolidation phase for um for price okay so between 12 at noon to 1 p.m that one hour do not place trades and after that you could use the high and low of that one hour mark as valid points of liquidity okay and when you trade lunch hour you do the same for targets as you would do on sessions so if you sweep the lunch hour high you target the lunch hour low and vice versa right and once we got that, we would look for a displacement in the opposite direction of a stop run that preferably made a market structure shift and left behind a fair value gap, okay? Just like I showed you. And the target and stop placement, when trading session highs and lows, target the session high if you swept the session low. Target the session low if you swept the session high. Target internal liquidity or equilibrium PD arrays when trading anything else. Okay, I forgot to mention the lunch hour, but that is the same principle as when you're trading sessions. And here it goes. Stop always goes above the recent high. Okay, but I gave you an example of where you could place it if the high was too far away. So either you don't trade it if it's too far away, or you put it near, a, you know, another PDRA. So I hope this was helpful. Um... Of course, I'm not going into nearly as much detail as ICT, and you're probably missing a thing or two, but I believe this is all you need in order to be profitable if you stick to these rules. You don't need all the minor stuff, really. Um, that is my opinion, so don't come at me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.